Good day, Grade Sevens, and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. You are tuned in to your fourth lesson for EMS. In this lesson, we are going to talk more about personal or household budgets. Are you ready? Let's go. So let's review the concept of a budget. What is a budget? A budget is a list that shows how much money you expect to receive and how much your expenses will be for a specific period. Budgets help businesses and households to plan better for the future so they can determine how much money they can spend, save or borrow. Budgets are an essential planning tool for businesses or for personal use. Unfortunately, there are many who don't see the use of having a budget and therefore later on they end up in financial trouble. This is why you are learning about budgets early in life so that you can make good financial decisions one day. So, why do you think that budgeting is important? Pause this video and discuss it in class. Yes, that is correct. Budgets help us to plan ahead, set financial goals and save so that we can reach those goals. Budgets can be set up on different platforms. People who draw up their personal budgets sometimes do it by hand with a pen and paper, but businesses that work with large budgets will use more formal platforms such as Excel or the app You Need a Budget. Capitec has also developed a very cool budgeting tool to help people save better. So now that you know what a budget is, why budgets are important, and on what platforms you can set up a budget, we can now move on to household budgets. It is very important for a household to draw up a budget. This budget should include the income of the household, the expenses of the household, and what the household would like to save. Let's take a look at some important tips for setting up a budget. Firstly, you should always be in control of your finances. You should know how much money is coming in and how much is going out, especially when it comes to your expenses. Many people don't keep track of how much money they spend and therefore end up in trouble. It is also important to keep your debt low and not to make unnecessary debt. A good practice is only to make debt on things that you really need and not on luxuries. Let's say your parents need a new car to drive to work and back, but financially they actually can only afford a cheaper, more affordable car. But they decide to put themselves in debt and buy a brand new BMW. Do you think that this was a sensible decision? No. They should rather buy the more affordable car instead of making a lot of debt that they will struggle to repay. Furthermore, it is also important after the expenses have been subtracted from the income to put away or to save the money that's left over. It is also important to plan well before you go shopping. Let's compare Cyril with his friend Jaden. Cyril makes a list of all the things that fit into his budget and that he needs before he goes to the grocery store every week. And when he is busy shopping, he only buys what he needs. His friend Jaden, on the other hand, doesn't plan ahead at all. He goes to the shops and walks through all the aisles and puts everything he wants in his basket. Who do you think is likely to spend more, Cyril or Jaden? Jaden will most likely spend more money at the store because he doesn't work according to a budget. Jaden just buys and buys and buys. The last important tip is to adjust your budget regularly. As one's income increases, one's expenses also increase. Therefore, it's important to adjust your budget accordingly. It is also important to set up a time frame for your budget. The period for a household budget is usually monthly and will be revised now and then when the household's income or expenses change. Whereas business budgets are usually set out for a few months or annually. Let's take a look at the characteristics of a budget. Firstly, a budget must be realistic. 
For example, it's not realistic to set aside 500 rand a month for groceries, when in reality we actually use 1,500 rand on groceries per month. Secondly, a budget must be adaptable to try and prevent various financial risks. A budget should be used as a means to help you save and therefore not needlessly spend money on unnecessary things. So most of you don't earn an income such as a salary or a wage just yet. However, many of you do earn pocket money. That pocket money is actually your income. So for those of you who do earn pocket money each month, and I want you to be honest here, raise your hand if you spend all of that pocket money each month. Now, raise your hand if you save some of your pocket money each month. Well done. Remember, it's always important to save. Household income is the income that households earn from salary or wages. Sometimes households try to earn additional income when their salary or wage is insufficient to cover the expenses. Next up is expenses. Household expenses differ according to the size of the household, as well as the household's needs and wants. So someone who earns a large income can satisfy their needs and their wants, whereas someone who earns a smaller income has to make sure that they first cover their needs before they explore their wants. I'm going to put up a few expenses on the screen and if you think that your household has some of these expenses, I want you to raise your hand. And so we can go on and on and on. But it's important not to incur unnecessary expenses and thereby waste money. When setting up a budget, we need to follow these steps. First, you need to determine how much income you will receive. For most households, this is pretty easy. This is the income that they receive from salary or wages. Secondly, add up all your income. Thirdly, also work out how much money you expect to spend. For example, on water, electricity, or groceries. After that, add up all your expenses. Then you subtract the expenses from the income. The amount that remains at the end of the month is your savings. You should always look at how you can make that amount more so that you can save more. It is important to save this budget securely so that you can access it every month and can make adjustments accordingly. So let's do a household budget together. We are going to use Abdul's household budget as an example. Abdul is a single man who receives a salary of 10,000 Rand per month. He also has the following expenses every month. 4,000 Rand worth of rent that he has to pay, grocery expenses of 1,000 a month, his cell phone bill is 300 per month, he also buys 500 Rand worth of water and electricity monthly, 600 Rand for his taxi fees every month. And finally, he spends 500 Rand per month on social activities over weekends. So let's help Abdul draw up a budget. If you are in class, you are going to do this as a class activity. If you are watching this video at home, try and do it on your own. Steps one and two tell us to identify and add up all of the income. Now Abdul only has one source of income, his salary of 10,000 Rand per month. After that, we can add up all his expenses. His rent expense of 4,000 Rand and his grocery expenses of 1,000 Rand a month. His cell phone bill is 300 Rand plus his water and electricity bill of 500 Rand his taxi fee of 600 Rand per month. And then finally, Abdul likes to go to the movies. So his social bill for the month is 500 Rand. And this gives us a total of 6,900 Rand. Remember, after this, we have to subtract expenses from income. This gives us a total of 3,100 Rand. Therefore, 
Abdul has a surplus of 3,100 Rand each month. So Abdul's budget looks good. This shows that he works well with his money. Now what do you think Abdul should do with his money? Do you think it would be wise for Abdul to hide his money under a pillow? Discuss this in class. And so we have come to the end of yet another lesson. In this lesson, we discussed household budgets. In the next lesson, we will focus on business budgets. See you then, grade sevens.